Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about protein deficiency, signs, symptoms, and some of the causes, as well as relevant lab markers that indicate protein deficiency. So wait till the end to get the clinical tidbits. So let's get right into it. Signs and symptoms. Muscle loss, or inability to gain muscle despite working out and you're both prone for injury. Osteoporosis, people don't realize it's not just calcium and minerals in the bone, there's protein, okay, amino acids. Brittle hair, nails, dry skin, as well as impaired wound healing. You get a cut and it doesn't heal well or in a short period of time that it should, okay. Decreased immune function, these people will be more prone for infection or become recurrently sick, right? Mood changes, anxiety, depression, insomnia. So sleep disturbance is a big one. Some of the causes of deficiency in protein. One, it's hypochlorhydria, a low stomach acid. As we age, we tend to produce less of the HCL or hydrochloric acid Therefore, you might need to supplement at a certain age. Malabsorption, that can be caused to a variety of different things. It can be related to autoimmune disease or some sort of GI dysfunction. Antacid use. Antacids are overused here in the United States, okay? It's meant to be used for a short period of time to help you with a specific condition uh, like Barrett's esoph esophagitis. However, antacids are used for a prolonged period of time and is causing problems with protein absorption and breakdown. Age, like I said before, as you age, you produce less. Poor diet, you're just not getting enough protein in your diet. Um, people are using the SAD diet, right? The standard American diet, where it's very carb heavy. Inflammation can definitely cause malabsorption issues, things like gastritis. How much protein do we really need to take in? Right, that's a big question. So if you took high quality beef, four ounces, is approximately 29 grams of protein in four ounces uh, and beef. Current recommendation says 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. Right? So if you took someone who's 150 pounds, and, you, and that's approximately 68 kilograms, you would have to take in 54.4 grams of protein. That is your minimum, basic, basic minimum. Okay? The literature actually states you should take in actually 1.2 to 1.4 grams of protein per uh, body weight. So a 150 pound person, you're looking at 81.6 to 95.2 grams of protein per day. If we have someone who has health challenges, I like to see it around 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. So 155, 150 uh, pound person will take in 108.8 grams of protein. Now people who are athletes, they're looking at approximately two grams per kilogram of body weight. So that's equivalent to 136, maybe going up to about 150 grams of protein per day, right, if you're an athlete. Some athletes who are uh, very um, energy demanding and, and muscle work, etc., may need even more than that, all right? So it really depends on the individual. Now, Let's look at some lab markers, okay? There's simple tests, CBC with chem, that can show you if you have protein deficiencies, okay? So number one is BUN. That should be 10 to 16. If you have high BUN, okay, that's hypochlorhydria, or low stomach acid. If you have low BUN, that's malabsorption, okay? Now, this range right here are optimal ranges. The lab ranges are actually a little bit broader, right? So if you fall 
below lab ranges, then you have some serious issues. If you fall below optimal ranges, they, there can be some modifications that can help you improve your protein absorption. Globulin, 2.4 to 2.8. Again, those are optimal ranges. Increased globulin is hypochlorhydria, a low stomach acid. Decreased globulin is digestive inflammation. When you have digestive inflammation, you're that person who can't take apple cider vinegar or lemons, or if you took a hydrochloric acid supplement, it causes burning in your abdomen, okay? So those people have digestive inflammation. Albumin, which is another protein, right? If you have decreased, it's hypochlorhydria. So if you just look at it and you look at a pattern, you have high BUN, high globulin, and low albumin, it's hypochlorhydria or low stomach acid, okay? Also, you can have low hemoglobin related to protein deficiencies. Here are the ranges for males and females. You can have, number one cause for low hemoglobin would be iron deficiency, right? So you would check things like ferritin, serum iron, etc., and look at other red blood cell markers to determine iron deficiency. If your iron levels are normal and your ferritin level is normal and your other red blood cell marker doesn't really indicate anything, but you have low hemoglobin, globin is a protein, okay? if you have low hemoglobin and not iron deficiency, then you likely have a protein deficiency. All right. Now there's a lot of different diets out there. The best diet to increase fats and protein are things like ketogenic diet or carnivore diet or a, even a paleo or autoimmune paleo diet because there's protein heavy diets. Now, you can be a vegetarian, and vegetarians are going to struggle a little bit to get the entire protein profile. It can be done, but it's just a lot of work. Vegetarians who eat, let's say, eggs or dairy have a little easier time getting the protein, okay? But people, a lot of people have egg allergies or uh, dairy allergies, so it can be problematic. So it's best if you can get an animal protein to increase your protein levels. And if you have hypochlorhydria or low stomach acid issues or signs, you definitely want to increase hydrochloric acid along with some digestive enzymes to break down your protein appropriately. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.